today's meeting canceled? I was wondering that myself. Uh, yeah, I'm just writing Timo on the Slack if, if it's happening today. So let's see. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. Hello. Yes, I uh, forgot about the time completely. <laughs> I was working on AFJ and uh, very deep, deeply focused.
quickly making an agenda and then we can get started right away. All right, let's get started. Um, welcome everyone to the RCM JavaScript working group call of July 20th. I need to remind you to remember the hyperledge code of conduct and the antitrust policy. Um, if you would like to add yourself to the attendees list, feel free to do so. Uh, post it link in the chat. Um, so, um yeah any status updates from the we had a call two weeks ago um any status updates people would like to share um, <clears throat> there was a, an aries working group call yesterday and um the discussion mostly focused around um some work that's been done on marketing copy and the results of a survey that were informing that marketing copy. Um, so, and there were links in the, um, in the meeting notes to the survey results and to that marketing copy proposal. So if anybody wants to go and look at those, um, they're available. Uh, I think the intent is to make, um, apply the changes to the main wiki sooner rather than later, and then iterate on it as necessary to try and get some of the benefit of the rework that's been done. That's number one. And there was also a presentation given on um, Aries VCX, which is a, um, a library uh, written in Rust that um, uses a whole bunch of the other Rust libraries to provide a bunch of the Aries functionality. Um, the intent is not to provide a, a complete batteries included agent, but rather all of the stuff that you would need to construct one or a wallet or something else. Looks like they've made good progress. Um, and there's work underway at the moment to uh, integrate support for Mozilla's FFI project to export or describe all of the Rust bindings to their primary APIs so that they can be made available in other languages. And that's using Unify or? Yes, I believe so. Okay, cool. Thank you. Any other updates? Um, the uh, load testing framework um, with, uh, on, that's under the Aries Mediator service um, we recently uh, used that to test over 12,000 users simultaneously. Cool. That's the socket doc, uh, right? No, that's the um, load testing underneath the Aries mediator service. I'll drop a link in the chat. Okay. Okay, and this is a, a test you have run to um, to test mediator load, and you had twelve thousand concurrent open sessions. Or so this is. Um, it can be used more than just uh, testing mediation. Um, it has some other tests inside of it, such as uh, issuance. Um, we're also working on adding verification workflow to it as well. Um, it uses uh, AFJ as the client. Um, it uses uh, Logist as the orchestrator. Cool. 
And so the difference with like the, the ARI's load generator uh, is that this is one is fully focused on mediation. No. Um, oh. uh, it started off with just mediation. Uh, we've added issuance into it. We're working on verification flow right now. Okay, cool. And, and do you know how it compares then to the ARI's load generator? Um, the Aries load generator, my understanding is that it starts up all of the services. Uh, the concept here with the Aries mediator service is it's uh, focused on um, uh, being a client to an existing infrastructure. Um, right now, the issuance and um, verification flows focused on uh, an ACPI API end, but I'm sure it could be modified to use um, any other issuer or verifier as long as the endpoint's updated, uh, because it will contact the issuer and verifier API endpoints to request the connection and request the um, issuance or verification. So, so this is intended to be able to point at some ARIES infrastructure to be able to determine what its load characteristics are as opposed to the load generator, which sparks up its own infrastructure and is primarily, I guess, to test um, that things don't tip over. Uh, <laughs> I guess that would be the primary difference in the approach. Yeah, the goal is to test the right. infrastructure that's right. uh, existing. OK, good. Sounds interesting. Cool. Any other status updates? All right. I think we can get to the agenda. Um, are there specific uh, topics people would like to discuss um, on the agenda today? Uh, last time we went through um, a lot of the pull requests. Um, um, so yeah, are there specific topics people would like to discuss? Otherwise we could maybe do also a quick quick tour around uh, the pull requests again. Um, uh, yeah. All right. Let's do that. Um, not sure if there's a lot of progress being made. I think a lot of people also. Uh, Maybe it's games. covered in the in the pull requests, Timo. But I would be interested in knowing uh, where the work is in terms of supporting the newest versions of like Expo and React Native and dependencies and the like. Yeah, and so um, newest, do you mean Expo 49 then, or? Uh, Warren, do you mean like the latest, like ex, uh, Expo 49, or uh, what are its uh, meaning specifically? I yeah, I believe so. I think there was work intended to be done to get like beyond React Native 68 or 69 and uh, and the related Expo versions. Uh, I don't recall the exact version numbers, but. Okay, yeah. So that work is, is completed. Um, and um, so we haven't tested with the, the latest Expo version, uh, but that came out like, I think two weeks ago or something. Um, uh, but I don't expect too many issues, um, but we have tested it with, um, like we got it working with the latest versions and Barrett did some very complex um, um, stuff to make, um, if we go to the, for example, the Anacred Express um, repo. Um, so React Native, it was mostly with Android, I think. Yeah, so um, as you can see, there's now uh, custom 
logic for different React Native versions. Um, and as you can see, it works like we have tested it upwards to 0 0.71. Um, we haven't tested it with um, um, with uh, uh, 0 0.72, but that's also uh, just came out. So um, I think it, it, it should all just work out of the box and, and everything with um, auto linking and with an expo project. Um, so if you would like to have an example is the uh, uh, Paradigm Wallet repo, which has an Expo app in here and that uses, um, let me see, it uses React Native 0 0.71. It uses um, uh, the latest Ares Oscar um, release. Uh, and it uses AFJ040 um, without like native code. So I think this, this, you can use this as an example if you're looking for how to set it up. Does that answer your question or? Uh, yes, that's great, thank you. Perfect, yeah. So, and we need to, yeah, uh, add some more documentation exactly on how uh, to set it up, but it, it should all work. Cool. Um, so any PRs people would like to discuss? I haven't had a lot of time to, to look at the PRs we discussed last time. There are some reviews I need to um, uh, need to leave. Um, any PRs people would like to discuss? All right, maybe um, then there are some issues we can maybe uh, get some consensus on. Um, one is that uh, it started in another PR um, for some updating of the samples, but it's currently like with the, the wrappers that only work in um, uh, React Native uh, or like only in Node 80, while well, we also support Node 16 and it adds a lot of complexity is, um, um, that we um, make the wrappers only support node 18 because they basically already do. We uh, add the patched, patched wrap NAPI to those wrappers so you don't have to do the custom resolutions anymore. And we update AFJ to only support node 18 and we drop support for node 16, which is a bit ahead of the end of life, which is in September. But I think it would make the set up a lot easier and, and improve performance. So um, I'm curious if people are, if someone is like against dropping uh, support for Node 16. So this will be um, in 0 0.5 uh, because uh, like it would be a breaking change. So 0 0.4 will keep support for Node 16. Um, then for. Hi, Tim. Um, I was only successful in launching the Aries workshop demo and as well as running through the tutorials of Hyperledger Aries JavaScript by using Node 16 on Linux and w WSL to Windows Linux. <clears throat> I tried Node 18 and it gave me a lot of errors. Um, so I'm not for doing away support for Node 16, primarily because of a lot of troubleshooting and blockages that are experienced. Okay. Um, so, um, did, have you opened an issue for that or? I have not, because I was successful with getting it running on Node 16. Um, okay. I can log the issues for Node 18 then. Yeah, if you could do that, because um, usually what we do is when a node version reaches end of life, we will remove support for it um, uh, either way. So that would be in September, which is like not that much in the future. So if we can get that addressed, um, um, that would be great. There are like, there may be some issues with the, uh, the Linux subshell on Windows where uh, it's not working. Um, are you running it with India SDK or with Ares Oscar? 
Um, th so, so I just npm installed um, based on the tutorials, based on the documentation, and that didn't work. Uh, so it it was just using the Aries JavaScript online documentation. Uh, there was no mention for India SCAR prerequisites. Okay, so are you still on zero dot three? I'm I'm so I I downloaded the zero dot four zero repository and I, the workshop demo, the one that was hosted last week, and I ran that successfully. Um, but I think the older tutorials might be zero dot three. I don't think it's okay. zero dot. It, it was the latest actually because it's based on the documentation online. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, then I think you're you're using the latest, especially if you also followed it from the workshop. So yeah, then please open an issue, uh, and then we'll take a look, and then we'll make sure that that is resolved before we remove support for uh, 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 before we drop support for uh, Node sixteen. Um, it's, it's called Windows Subshell for Linux or something, right? Yeah, WSL2. Yes, it's uh, correct. Okay. Uh, uh, what's your username on GitHub? Dniker86, uh, D-N-A-I-C-K, uh, D-N-A, but it's... Um, can you post it in chat? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other concerns with dropping support for Node 16? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, Okay, um, there was... Do, so I just yeah. have one other comment, I guess, which is, um, do we know whether this will create a problem for the bifold for folks who are primary? Because oh, actually they're not using the node version anyways, right? They're using React Native. So I guess it doesn't apply. Um, no, so it doesn't apply. Um, I think we, no, we, I think we just, we need to make sure that we set the engine version on only the, at Earth framework slash node uh, uh, package, and then it shouldn't uh, be an issue. Perfect. Um, all right. There was also a discussion on breaking out the demo. Um, I think, yeah, this, I, I just need to comment on like something, but I think uh, it's non-controversial. Um, are there any other issues people would like to uh, discuss or would like to work on address that we need to uh, discuss? Um, I see there is a unqualified did migration update. This is something that's being discussed in the, uh, the errors working group calls to be able to migrate from legacy dits to qualified dits. Um, we already have a custom implementation that goes from unqualified to 
did Pier 1 did. Um, and I think with this, with this, we just have to update all the un, all the did pair one dits. We have migrated from the unqualified dits to now did pair two and did pair three dits. Um, we did store all the uh, still the legacy dits and did documents. So um, would be a migration um, uh, script that we have to write. I think we can get that into um, uh, zero five zero. Um, that does raise the question um, on whether we should change the default did pair num algo that is used for creating connections. So uh, currently, we in the did exchange protocol we use did pair one um, because um, for did exchange you need to attach the did document to. Um, um, to the did exchange message and um, then sign that. Uh, problem is with did pair two, did pair three, you don't necessarily have a did document because you resolve it based on the um, um, you resolve it based on the uh, the did itself. So, um, and I think we had raised started this discussion in the areas working group call, but we never came to a very concrete decision on how do you handle it if you don't have the did document should you attach the did document either way so like just to resolve the document and and sign that um so uh, yeah um should we change the default did peer method if we add this or are we going to use did peer one for did exchange and migrate all the legacy um uh, did to did pair two slash three. Does anyone have an opinion on this? I guess there would be a need to have uh, agreement across the Aries projects um, in terms of did it, you know the did exchange. Right. I don't know. It's a, yeah. a decision we can make in isolation. So um, I'm not sure that I have an opinion on it, but uh, it is still on the agenda within the Aries working group. And so um, if we need, like, it sounds like it's getting time to get serious about finalizing that stuff. So maybe you can raise it higher priority on the agenda for the next meeting. Yeah, so I, I think the um, uh, one thing that isn't currently talked about, and that's the like the uh, the did exchange protocol, um, not having very clearly defined um, how to use non did pair one uh, did. So whether it's public dits or um, like uh, uh, dits that you can resolve based on the or did documents that you can resolve based on the did. Um, I think there is maybe uh, an issue open in Aries RFC. Um, and there is the, let me see. Uh, the, there is a legacy did this one. Yeah. Um, so this repo is there. I think the idea is now to migrate this um, transformation script um, to go from like a legacy did to a did pair two. And I think Stephen added support for did pair three. Um, so I think with that, we are um, mostly there in having the, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the process defined. So I guess that then comes down to um... Do we want to go with the most recent 
SPAC, or do we want to go with something that might achieve wider compatibility with folks who haven't gone there yet? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I think what they are suggesting also in the community coordinated update um, is that um, you need to support. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think because it's a community coordinated update, there will be quite a long period um, uh, 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 process where, let me see, pre work to step one. Step one is. So I think what is step one here? I think it's to support. Uh, this is, here's the, okay. So we need to, agent build must update all agent code bases and deployments to accept in the old unqualified and new forms. Um, during this step, uh, agent must continue to use the unqualified uh, uh, dits in all cases. Yeah, so what I'm, uncertain about um, is that it says it should, that agent builders must update all agent code base and deployment to use only fully qualified dits in all communication. Um, does that also include the connection protocol? Because in that case, um, it's probably gonna be very complex because like it has been implemented a few years ago like it's very, it uses an old uh, way of structuring a DIT document while DIT pair two uses a new one. So currently how we implemented in AFJ is we use just an unqualified exchange and then internally we translate it into a qualified identifier and use that. Um, um, well, I think this is suggesting um, to uh, use did pair two or did pair three everywhere, even in creating a connection, for example. Um, do, is anyone involved in, in the discussion share and know more about this or? I've only been peripherally involved. And so I don't feel equipped to like make any definitive statements about this. Uh, it's, this seems to have been driven more by uh, Stephen Curran and um, Sam. Okay, I'll uh, leave a comment on this PR with these questions then. Um, but then, yeah, it should be quite easy for us to to uh, follow whatever is is described here uh, and and get that implemented while still supporting the um, the old ways of uh, doing things without breaking backwards compatibility. Uh, because I don't think we should, like, I don't think it's, like, if we do this, like, updating everything uh, to use only fully qualified bits, it means we're going to break so much backwards compatibility with all implementations that have been made over the years and maybe are not going to adopt this. Um, so it would be good if we can have a bit more of a, like, gradual, uh, hey, if you support qualified let's do that otherwise um we'll keep using the the unqualified ones um directly okay um are there any other feature issues people would like to to discuss here or great Okay, then I think we can just uh, um, uh, cut the meeting short for today um, and um, we can uh, yeah, continue with work on the PRs and, and issues. Um, 
one thing um, I do want to highlight is I see you're unmute, Jakob. Do you want to say something or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, good catch. I just wanted to raise my hand, but uh, uh, yeah, you, you were first. Yeah, uh, I, have, I have a question. We don't have to discuss it now, but uh, about it's it's about the migration to the AFJ, like like to new libraries, Afscar, VDR, and Alongrets. Is there any any documentation about that? Any 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 description about about some pain points or or like a tricky part which we should uh, be aware of? Uh, so there is the migrating from 03 to 04, um, mm -hmm. which introduced the breaking changes, and there okay. is an, um, a migrating from India's SDK wallet to RS Oscar. Um, so um, that's there. Um, one thing that we haven't documented very well is the migration from um, in the SDK to in the VDR or um, in the SDK to Anacrets RS. So like the changes in the API are um, uh, uh, covered here. So like that you now have to register Anacrets module, but as you see, this still uses the in the SDK module here. Um, but there is um, um, in the agent setup, it does define like, okay, how do you use the, the in the VDR uh, module and configure it with the different ledgers. Um, so that's the documentation there is, um, but no specific, like these are pain points or something um, to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so, sounds good, sounds good. Uh, I'm just thinking, I, 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 I know that uh, actually I asked the, uh, uh, Berend uh, or like Ariel on the on their presentation about AFJ four version 0 .4, 0 0.4 and about this and uh, my question was was if like if if we should migrate everything at once or if there is specific process if if there is better like if there is some some process which might be better. And what I mean is that we, we have like 0 0.3 right now with in the SDK, right? So now it's a question like, I, I remember that Baron said that it should be maybe better to do everything at once. But I think that he also mentioned some, that there were some issues probably with some part, but I'm, I don't remember that that part, that, that what, what exactly you mentioned. Do you have, uh, do, do you have any, any, do you know anything about that or? I think um, we have done mostly everything at once. Also what we did in the Bifold and some other projects, we are just doing it all at once because we would like to uh, get rid of the India SDK as soon as possible. Um, um, but you can do it in two steps. Like you could do first an upgrade to 04 and use the India SDK still. And then at another point, you could do the upgrade to RS Oscar, for example, when 05 releases or whenever you're ready for it. So it are two separate um, migrations you can do. We have just chosen to do it at once. Um, if you don't have a in the SDK wallet to migrate yet, so haven't released your wallet to the stores, for example, I would definitely recommend to do it all at once because then you don't have to do the in the SDK to Oscar migration, because that does require, um, um, like we have needed to do this in the um, in the Bifold wallet, and it does require mm -hmm. you to have like a custom package. You need to, on every agent starter, basically, you need to do a check like, okay, was I previously an in the SDK wallet? If so, I now need to migrate it and, and uh, do that to an Oscar structure, because like the database is completely different. Mm -hmm. So we really have like to, make a connection to the Postgres database, uh, uh, create new tables, move the structure, decrypt everything, re-encrypt. So like if you can get away with not having this package, yeah, I would say, sure, uh, do it all at once. 
Yeah, in our case, we have it already out there. So it's it's already in production. We have we already we already did the migration from the VCX uh, li library to AFJS, as you know. But uh, there was also not only it was also not only about uh, like frameworks, but also about data. So we already did this migration to in the SDK. Uh, yeah, yeah, and now it seems that we will have to do this migration uh with with uh, those libraries but i i think it's great that there if, if there is some uh let's call it script right to to do this migration uh yeah that's that's definitely yeah. great so I, can... I, I hope that it should be fine yeah it, it's not that complex i can send you the uh i think it's the the implementation from the bifold uh wallet uh mm -hmm. Let me see. Yeah, so uh, basically this is it, um, where it checks, is it uh, migrated to Ascar? And if not, there's a custom uh, method implementation here that um, calls this uh, in the SDK to Ascar migration update. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll add the... Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's great. Thanks. Um, Warren. Yeah, I seem to recall. So, so two things. One, another thing that came up in the uh, Aries call yesterday is that Stephen Curran is uh, pushing towards uh, officially deprecating Indie SDK. Um, and they'd like to do it sooner rather than later. And so he's is trying to rally everybody to to do that so just as a point of interest is that the he wants to move ndsdk to archived state as soon as possible um so i don't know whether that goes into your decision about your migration path and the and the like just so you know that's happening and if you have concerns with that then you should chime in and get in touch with steven and you know let him know what your concerns are um and the other thing, the only thing I seem to recall as being an issue, and it may have been resolved, but with the migration was if with uh, AFJ and Ascar was if you were using multi tenant, I think there was that that's not supported in the current migration, but I might be incorrect about that. So I just wanted to bring that up as a question in case that's something that is germane here. Yeah. It it isn't implemented yet. Like we need to do uh, proper migrations for multi tenancy needs to be implemented still anyway. It is something we are going to implement because we are using multi tenancy with AFJ in zero for zero. Um, we haven't written the migration for multi tenancy and Node.js completely yet for Oscar. It's because we don't know anyone that is using um, it uh, multi tenancy in production. And so um, I added to like the uh, the docs and everything. There are some warnings in like, hey, multi tenancy is not supported. If you need it, please open an issue. Um, but I don't didn't want to go through all the trouble and complexity if nobody is ever going to need it. Um, yeah. So if you are using multi tenancy R on zero three with the SDK and you are in production and need to migrate it to um, uh, Oscar, then please open an issue and then we can look at getting that implemented. Um, but for example, we have mediators running um, with in the SDK uh, in 03, and we have successfully migrated those to 04 and updating Indy to Oscar. Um, so for that use case, uh, uh, yeah, it, it works fine. But yeah, you're right that that is um, not implemented then. Um, okay. Or the deprecating the Indian FK, yeah, might be a good one to discuss uh, also. Um, I'm in favor of it. I think it adds complexity to this project to also have to support it. Um, um, and the installation is like very cumbersome. 
um, also for newcomers. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm I'm totally on board with deprecating the Indian SDK. Maybe what we could do is already start adding um, notes to uh, like we have for um, we have in the uh, like experimental modules we have warnings like hey this is experimental maybe we could also start adding like hey this is going to be deprecated um, uh, logs warning logs and then maybe we say we remove support for in the SDK in either 05 but maybe we should set it for 06 release so people can still do one more upgrade with the in the SDK uh, to 05 but then in zeros dot six, we will remove support for the in the SDK. Um, and if people are um, really interested in uh, keeping support for it, then that would still be possible because like it's currently, there's no logic in core to support the in the SDK, but I would then suggest that from zero six onwards, we remove it out of the, the, the errors from JavaScript repository. And there could be like a custom maintained implementation outside of it if you really need in the SDK. Um, but then, um, yeah, I think that would provide a clear migration path. Uh, Kim. Yeah, um, uh, if you have a clear migration path here, it'd be good to let Stephen know kind of the timeline um, because uh, one of the things that came up was removing um, some of the uh, build artifacts from the repositories to encourage uh, no longer using in the SDK. And so having a timeline on that would be helpful for uh, Stephen to know when a good time would be to remove those build artifacts from uh, various uh, repositories. Yeah, and so um, build artifacts, because I think removing build artifacts can mean that current deployments can break. Um, is that something we want? Um, I think my, my preferred approach would more likely be to like not update it anymore. So if you have like an older deployment, it doesn't suddenly um, break. The concern there is uh, deploying artifacts that aren't maintained anymore. Um, so if there's security holes or things like that. And so at some point um, uh, having the uh, artifacts deployed out there can be more of a liability than they are a benefit to anyone. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think the, the, the thing that would require some communication with Stephen then is about uh, a prospective plan for, you know, you, you mentioned perhaps you know, deprecate, putting in deprecation warnings and removing support in 050 or maybe in 060. And so if we had an idea of, uh, you know, what um, what you would desire to do there and uh, what the timelines are, you know, at, at best guess at that point for this release, then that could inform um, some of the other stuff that, that Stephen and others are doing to try and wrangle the India SDK to the ground. Just make sure we're coordinated on that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Are people any people here that are using in the SDK and don't intend to upgrade to Oscar and related libraries before zero five? or even zero six. Okay, well, that's uh, positive at least. Um, okay. Cool. Um, then uh, final note is, I think I also mentioned this, uh, last time um, already. I'm not 100% sure because it's two weeks ago already. Um, I had a vacation in between, so I wiped all my memory from before. Um, but that we wanted to switch hosting the AFJ call to being bi-weekly um, because there is 
uh, like with current things that are happening, I think having a bi-weekly call would be good enough. Um, and if there, well, in the future again arises, uh, like so much to discuss that we can do it in, uh, in the, the bi-weekly call, then we can always go back to having um, weekly calls. But I think a lot of the stuff can also be picked up in um, issues and pull requests. Um, any people against that here today that, that would like to keep it at a weekly call, people that are agreeing off the bi-weekly call or have any opinions, notes on this? Uh, I, I think it definitely makes sense during the summer vacations, right? Uh, maybe let's see uh, again on in September or uh, in autumn. Uh, and the, the, so th does it mean that uh, we would skip next week and uh, do it in two weeks again? Another call would be like in two weeks from now. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. Okay, I, I think, I think uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Tim. I, I just, this is my first meeting and I thoroughly enjoyed it. There's a lot of insight and I'll, I'm a bit sad. And if it goes to uh, sort of further away, further away from, you know, the consistency of biweekly, is it every two, two times a week or then twice? Every second week. Yeah, so it would um, be once every two weeks, two times a month, basically. Okay. Um, because I've been away, I haven't, I was so desperately looking to be in, more involved in the community. And uh, this is my first meeting and I, you know, thoroughly enjoyed it. So it'll be a bit sad on my part, not on my side. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good to know. Um, I think, yeah. Um, um uh, uh, I we have done it like for weekly, I think for a really long time already. I think it at first was bi-weekly. Um I just think with the conversations we have lately, um maybe maybe it's something for the summer months. Um and then we can always reconsider it after the summer months. Um or um if there are enough topics um to do it weekly, um um that would also be fine by me, but I think um, we can also, uh, yeah, we should have probably some more, like we have in the past looked at a bit like doing alternating weeks of having a maintainers and a users call basically, where um, uh, one week will be really focused on in-depth uh, uh, discussions on the implementation. The other one would be more focused on, um, um the uh on the user side of things having people give presentations on um uh what have they built with afj what can you do with it uh, more from a user perspective um and i noticed that i haven't had um a lot of time lately to prepare well for uh the working group calls and i think that's also um, um one of the reasons why i would like to uh, move it more to a bi-weekly call um, because uh, yeah, having people to present on these things with presentations and everything, I think that helps in making it a more, well, a, a better uh, working group call. Um, I have also discussed a bit with um, Jakub and Ariel and Karim and Berend and asked to maybe um, do it a bit more in alternating fashion where we host the working group calls. Um, I think that that could maybe also help a bit. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely take it into account. Um, I would like to propose for now to, at least for the summer, do it bi-weekly. And then as Jacob said, after the summer, we can reconsider to, to see like, okay, what's the interest and do we want to make it weekly or bi-weekly? Um, yeah, and so if you have topics you would like to um, present um, or talk about on, on the Airstream JavaScript call presentation or something like that, uh, also please, uh, uh, yeah, raise that to us uh, and then we can have those on the working group calls. 
Warren, you unmute it. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I, th I think that the, um, uh, you know, the, the cadence of the calls doesn't matter personally to me as as much one way or the one way or the other. Uh, but I will say that I think the last um, few months have been um, very busy for the project because there's been so much both refactoring of the framework, uh, as well as a lot of rework due to moving to shared components. And those two things have taken a lot of coordination and I think have needed the, the cadence of the calls uh, to, to maintain the velocity and coordinate those complex activities. And so I'd like to pass on some congratulations, I think, to the group to, for managing that. Like that's a very complicated set of things to, uh, to get to and deliver. And I think it was done pretty well. Um, and so if for the next little while it, you know, people need a, a break from that and uh, there's a lot more, you know, independent work that can happen that doesn't require as much coordination, then, you know, perhaps you know, less uh, uh, regular calls might be might be appropriate and, you know, community will <laughs> take that into account. But I, I, I certainly do appreciate the amount of work that's been, ha you know, and the amount of coordination that's happened to ha had to happen over the last few months. It's been pretty uh, intense. Cool, thanks, yeah. I, I think what you may, uh, what you say makes sense. Um, like there's been less activity in, in, in the last uh, uh, weeks. And so after the, a lot of the refactorings and that makes also that we have less to discuss, yes. Um, okay, then let's just keep it bi-weekly for now, but always keep it open. Like we can have it more often when needed. Uh, I'll communicate this with Rai. Um, then we're out of time. Uh, filter hour nicely. Um, thanks everyone. And then we won't have the meeting next week, but we will have it the one after. Uh, yeah, I need to think. Yeah, I'll, I'll be still, yeah, I'm going on vacation, but the week after that. So in two weeks, I will be here uh, with you. Uh, thanks everyone. Thank thanks. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.